Hello and welcome to Infinity. We're going to look now at using uh, the uh, color burn, but particularly from the direction of a kind of mathematical one, and looking at the the calculations of it. So if you're not mathematically inclined, just look away now. Come back next time when we'll be doing a lot of detail on different ways that you can use the color burn blend mode. Right now, now there's just the three of us. Let's uh, continue. So uh, just a reminder. This is the calculation, um, so which says for each of red, green, and blue in each channel. If the blend is zero, then the result is zero. This is taken out separately, otherwise, you get a divide by zero over here. Otherwise, you get this calculation here. Something to note about this, which you might spot, it is a one minus here and a one minus here. What's this about? It's probably worth saying something about this one minus e thing because it is a thing. And if you've got, say, you know, a pixel here or even a channel here, so you've got from 0 to 1 or 0 to 100 percent, which is more predictable and easier with sums than 0 to 255, then if you've got, say, the bottom layer here, the actual value is A, then this bit up here then is 1 minus A, um, which is called the inverse, uh, although if you're a mathematician, 1 divided by a number is, a, is an inverse. Just hold it for now that in photo editing and in some other things, the inverse is, is like this. So if you've got 0 0.7 up there, it's because you've got 0 0.3 down here. Uh, and then we had this thing up there, the 1 minus 1 minus. And in fact, what you get to is it's a double negative. You've got a 1 minus A, then a 1 minus of it. It gets you back to the original. But the actual trick is that in some of the things that you do, you tweaking and you're playing around with the A. So you invert it, play around with it, then invert it again to get back to something like the original, as opposed to a negative, which as we know in photography, a negative does not look like the real scene. And you also got a 0 to 1 stuff here instead of the 0 to 255, which means you can do things with it which you can't uh, otherwise, or it's just messier to do it. So as we said, one minus a gives the opposite. A uh, double negative gets you back to the beginning. Multiply by one and you get the original naught times it. You give naught. Yes, it's obvious stuff, but it's useful. So the number a divided by number, you've got the original. And a divided by naught is infinity, which computers can't handle. So you have to spot when you're dividing by zero. Any division, you're going to ask, could this be zero? And in which case you need to faff around with it. OK, let's have a look at where things go. So now we've got examples here of a base. We're going to leave the base like this. And the blend is, we'll start off with it as 0 0.8. So the base is fairly high, but the blend is even higher. So this is the 1 minus 0 0.3, which is this 0 0.3, which is the 1 minus base, the inverse of that divided by the blend mode, which is 0 0.8, which gives us 6.625, which means it was 70%. After applying the blend to it, it would now, the result will be 62% or 0 0.62, which means a darker by 11%. So you've reduced uh, the 0 0.8, has reduced the base color by 11% in this case. Um, bring the blend down by uh, one, uh, so it's the same as the base in this case. And you get it down the same sort of calculation. You got down now to 58% as opposed to 0.7, which means it is darker by 17%. So it's also this is kind of handy because it means if you're doing a duplicate blend, then it's going to have this effect. You take it down to 0.6 and you end up with 0.5. So this is now darker by 29%, um, 0.4 by 43%. See, so it's going up in leaps and bounds. Uh, and when this the, the darkness is getting there faster, the effect is getting more and more and more, you're going to hit the end rail at some point. Um, so when you get to here, that again, the 64% here, but you're seeing this thing, the darker the blend mode, the bigger the change, because this is as this goes down, it's getting darker. Uh, and when you get to the point here where the blend here is same as the one minus blend here, you've got the one minus base, sorry, the, you know, 
uh, divided by the blend, which is the 0.3 divided by this, which gives you 1. So you have 1 minus 1, which is 0, which is black. But then leaves the question, what happens if you go even lower? Yeah, so you've got this, you're down to black. And so now let's have a look when it gets to 0.2. So now this means the calculation is going to be, you're going to have 0.3 divided by 0.2, which means you're going to get a negative number. You can't have a negative number with colours, so it just gets clamped to zero, so it's also black. So in other words, when this gets lower than this, then it's going to end up black. And um, what it also effectively means then is that when the blend is darker, it's more likely to make it black. And when the base, because this is fairly high deliberately, because it maybe had a number of steps before we got black, but this is low, then it would, the sums would mean you'd very quickly get to black. So if you put all this into a spreadsheet, you get something like this. For the darkened blend mode, it looks like this. So you've got the blend mode along here, 0 to 1, the base here, 0 to 1, and you get kind of an L-shaped thing here in a linear way that it progresses from 0 here up to 1 up there. Do the same with the multiply, and you get kind of a curve around like this going up here, which is you know, related to the way that multiply uh, often looks nice. It's less angular, if you like. But when you get to colour burn, the entire triangle, half the thing is, is sliced out. It's going to be black. It's only when the combinations fit into here that you know, this is going to work. And so you can see here, put the three of them together, this one increases, then this one is, is increasing again. It's like pushing the, the blacks up and you're pushing the blacks up even more on this one. So let's have a look at that um, and do that with a the blend here that, that initially when you start off just a reminder of the effect here that if I take this one here I put a rectangle on top of it and I put on a colour burn I get this effect so that when I slide this up here that more and more and more is going to be black. But what if I do this on a square like I did with those spreadsheet tables? If I start off here, I've got the base mode, the base along here, so it's the base is goes up here from zero here up to naught here. So this was the the layer underneath. On top of that I put a blend mode um, which goes from yeah, that's along here, the blend it goes from 0 here to 1 here. And then if I change the the uh, blend mode itself, I go from, so darken, you can see there's that L shape. With multiply, there's a bit of a curve, but when you get to colour burn, then it gets completely black all the way there. And it's quite a, you know, taking out that half thing. So this just reflects very much what we saw there in that table. OK, that's about it. And now, sorry for going on for so long, but I hope it was interesting if you like this sort of thing. So I will dive out from time to time, do separate videos for those of us who find this stuff fascinating, but also helps you think when you are working in editing. It's not just theoretical, it's also practical as well. So that's it. Thank you and um, bye for now.